Hello out there folks, it's Dave from Dave Station VR, and welcome to episode 8 of PSVR Digest. It's the week of October 1st, 2018, and let's get into it. At the top of the news this week is Astrobot Rescue Mission, which has been a breakout success, way more than I could have ever imagined. Uh, not only is this the highest rated PSVR game of all time, it's the highest rated VR game on any platform, and it got covered by media all the way up to IGN. And if you guys know IGN, they never cover VR. And they gave it a 9, which is pretty incredible. You can tell that this game really made an impact on people, and it's going to push the system forward. And it's a Sony exclusive, which is awesome for us uh, PSVR owners. Second piece of news this week is about Firewall Zero Hour. We got some more news on a patch coming soon, and uh, that is not going to fix a lot of things that people have been asking for, but it's going to open up the ability to purchase cosmetic items on the PSN store. And uh, they're also going to have a special Halloween face paint for PS Plus users. I'm thinking it could have something to do with petrifying pumpkins, I don't know. Also noteworthy this week was the first live stream of a full theatrical performance in Rec Room. Uh, they did this reenactment of The Princess Bride, which everybody knows, and they inserted lots of cool Rec Room in-jokes, and it was just a lot of fun. Um, if you want to take a look at that, there is a full edited version available on PSVR Frank's channel, so check that out. Overall, I think they did a really good job, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the Orange Bucket acting troupe has up their sleeve next. Last thing I want to talk about is the upcoming PlayStation VR award show hosted by PSVR Without Parole, who is one of my oldest YouTube friends. Great channel if you haven't checked it out yet, but I'm sure you have. And uh, over the next week, they're going to be releasing videos showing each of the nominees for all the categories. And it's going to be kind of an Oscar-style show, a star-studded event, if you will, being broadcast live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on October 13th, so definitely tune in for that. I know I will be. Real quick, I want to mention that uh, next week there will not be an episode of the PSVR Digest. I'm taking a little break. I've got a vacation scheduled for myself at the end of the week with my girlfriend. And uh, I will still have full reviews up for all the games coming out, so keep an eye on the channel throughout the week, and I'll still have you covered. That wraps it up for news, so let's get into the upcoming games for next week. The big one is going to be Evasion, which is a new first-person shooter online co-op multiplayer game with campaign and survival modes and different classes to choose from and aim support. So definitely keep an eye on that one. We're also finally getting chapters 4 and 5 of The Exorcist VR. And I thought the first three chapters were actually pretty good, pretty polished, and had some really scary moments. Some of the best graphics on PSVR too. And also, to round it out for horror fans, we're getting a game called Home Sweet Home, which is a first-person horror adventure game based on Thai myths and beliefs. And it's got really good reviews on Steam. It's going to have a physical exclusive release at GameStop. And uh, I've heard great stuff, so keep an eye on that one as well. That's going to bring us into the review wrap-up for this week. So let's kick it off with Racket Fury Table Tennis VR. This is a new ping-pong game for PSVR, and I'm happy to say it's much better than what we've seen previously. Um, you're going to be up in space playing against ping pong robots, and it's a really, really solid table tennis game. The move tracking is super on point, and uh, haptic feedback in the vibration, it responds so well to the strength of your hits that it really does kind of feel like you're playing ping pong. The physics on the ball also seem to be very, very solid, and I didn't have any issues where it seemed to be doing something that it seemed like it wouldn't do in real life. It really accurately recreates a table tennis experience. The uh, AI opponents are pretty challenging and offer a good difficulty progression as you go through the single player. Um, they've got motion captured animation, which looks really great. And once you get settled in, you kind of forget you're playing against an AI robot in space. It just feels like you're playing ping pong against somebody. Unfortunately, multiplayer is not there yet, uh, but it's scheduled to be added by the end of 2018. So um, that'll be cool because they've got these unlockable cosmetics for your avatar, and they're not that useful now because nobody can see you, but I think once you get an online matches, that'll be a really cool way to customize and uh, you know show off when you're playing against people. I would highly recommend this one for any ping pong fans out there. It's uh, the most accurate depiction that I've seen in VR so far, and uh, it's, it's just really fun. So totally understandable if you want to wait for the multiplayer to drop uh, to pick this one up. But in the meantime, I found the AI opponents to be pretty challenging and, and fun to play against, so it'll be good practice for the real thing. Next up is the big one for this week, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Now, I've already got a full review for this posted, but in short, it is a game changer for the future of VR platforming. It's accessible, it's charming, and it's got some really inventive uses of VR and the DualShock 4 light bar tracking that kind of blew my mind. Um, graphically, it's the best thing we've got on PSVR by a mile. I don't know how they optimized it this well, 
but Sony Japan Studio really knocked it out of the park here. While the price point of 40 bucks is a little higher than most VR games, um, there is so much content here, and I think you'll have a really good time with it. You've got 20 stages to play through with five bosses, and then each one of those unlocks a challenge level one of my favorite that, for the most part, are pretty entertaining and difficult. Um, you've also got coins that you can use to unlock UFO catcher little things in a, in a mini game, and once you get those, it unlocks these elaborate play sets that you can fool around in based on the campaign stages, and those are just really cool, a nice little extra. Overall, this game gets the highest recommendation I can give. I don't think I've ever enjoyed myself so much in VR. If you want a more in-depth look at it, uh, please take a look at my review. I'm going to link in the description below, and then there's also a couple gameplay videos that I've posted. Last up this week is a game called Smash Hit Plunder, which came out in the European region on the 5th, and they've also got a physical release over there. Uh, it's coming to the rest of the world soon. And this game is basically a, a simple formula. You go around, you smash everything you can, and you scoop up the loot. And you're trying to get the high score or do like a scavenger hunt as you go through. And it also has local multiplayer with uh, two or three different modes there as well. It's a very cute premise, and the art design will appeal to a lot of people. It's got kind of a Minecrafty look to it. And the basic mechanics are very simple. Like I said, you grab stuff, you smash it, you get the money. Initially, the control setup may take some getting used to. Um, it's not what you're typically going to see in other move controller based games, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. I think some people may find the smashing mechanic to get a little bit tiresome unless you really get into the mentality of the score rush, where you're finding new combinations of objects to increase your loot, like what if I burn this thing instead of smashing it? Um, you know, what can I do here to increase the possibility that I'm going to get some treasure? So if you're the kind of person who likes to replay a stage to get the high score on it and figure out, you know, the most efficient way to, to ace something, you'll probably get some good fun out of that. I haven't had a chance to try out the multiplayer yet, but it looks like it'll add a lot of value if you've got some friends around who are up for that kind of thing. And there's a really cool isometric view on the social screen uh, for people who are playing couch multiplayer. If you're just going for the single player experience though, it might be a little bit too expensive at launch. And I'm going to see a lot of people waiting for a sale on this one, I think. Overall, I would give it a light recommendation. I had a good time with it, but it's not something that's going to be for everybody, and uh, your mileage may vary. That wraps it up for reviews this week, and there's not a whole lot to mention as far as sales are concerned, so let's end this episode by entering the giveaway zone. That's right, I've got one free copy of Drive Club VR, physical copy to give away, to anybody in the United States. So if you're interested and you don't have it yet, leave a comment below. And I'll do a drawing in the next couple days. Get me your address, and I will send it to you. So that's going to wrap it up for Episode 8 of the PSVR Digest. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. I appreciate you. And uh, I'll be off next week, like I mentioned. But I look forward to seeing you guys uh, the week after that. And have a good rest of your day.